Hi guys, in this video we will be learning a case study of an international coastal environment, which will be the Nile Delta. So first of all, I'm going to give you a bit of background to the Nile Delta, which we can see in this image here. So the Nile Delta is a delta which was formed in northern Egypt, and as you can tell from the name, it's from at the end of the Nile. So the Nile Delta was formed where the Nile River spreads out and drains into the Mediterranean Sea. So this is a satellite photo here, and this is the Nile Delta, this triangular shape inversion into the coastline. And this is the Mediterranean Sea here. And as you can see, the Nile Delta stretches across a huge amount of the Mediterranean coastline at around 240 kilometers wide. So it's one of the world's largest river deltas. It's also a form of an arcuate delta, which is the specific shape of the delta that's formed. And it's also a very rich agricultural region. And this is going to play significant importance in the rest of the video to do with the challenges and opportunities in the region. So once again, this is an image of the Nile Delta here. As you can see, compared to the surrounding landscape, it's extremely fertile, as we can see from the green and blue colours, compared to the deserts around the edges. And this is just a map of the Nile course through Egypt here. And as we find in Egypt, most people live along the River Nile and a lot of people, including most of the Egyptian population, lives in this area of the Nile Delta. So as we can see, and what we will learn in the rest of the video, is how much importance and significance the Nile Delta has for Egypt, its economy and its health. So next we're going to look at some of the coastal processes occurring in the Nile Delta. Here is another satellite image showing you the River Nile and the Delta as it reaches the Mediterranean Sea. And this is a photograph of some agricultural farms on the Nile Delta itself. So as I mentioned earlier, the Nile Delta is an arcuate delta and it's a marine arcuate delta. So this means it enters into a marine coastline and it forms where the Nile meets the Mediterranean Sea. And the delta was formed when coarse materials, which were being carried by the river, deposited the materials here in this delta area when the river lost its energy upon meeting the sea. Because when it meets the sea, the river slows down and it can't carry as much material anymore, so it's deposited. So all the coarser material is deposited first in this area here, and then the finer sediments are deposited further out towards the sea. And when the river deposited this material, it also formed new smaller river channels which work their own way out to the sea and spread out from the Nile River. So currently the outer edges of the delta are being eroded by waves. And some of the coastal lagoons that are on the outsides of the delta are now seeing increasing salinity, which means that salt water from the sea is encroaching in and intruding into these fresh lagoons with fresh water from the river. And this is because their connections to the sea are increasing and more salt water from the sea in the Mediterranean is coming inland. Also, vegetation, as we can see in this photograph here, is really well established on the delta because of alluvial deposits, which are deposits from rivers, which make the land really highly fertile. And however, upstream, there was the construction of the Aswan High Dam on the River Nile, and the delta now no longer receives as much minerals and nutrients from the river because it's being stopped by the dam. And this is having significant consequences on the delta, and they're having to bring in fertilizers to keep the land as fertile as it used to be. So overall, the soils on the floodplains have become poorer in terms of their mineral and nutrient quality. So next we're going to look at some of the challenges the Nile Delta is facing. Firstly, in terms of sea level rise. So Egypt's Mediterranean coastline, which is the bit that goes over the Nile Delta, is being swallowed up by the sea because of global warming. So sea level rise is occurring and also the lack of sediment deposition in the Nile Delta itself because it's being blocked by the Aswan Dam that I just mentioned means that the Nile Delta is shrinking and this is 
an superimposed image here showing the current extent of the delta is out here on this line and as you can see we have the town of alexandria here as well and also rosetta and this image here where the lighter blue is now is where the sea is going to come further inland in the future and as you can see these towns have no chance of surviving they're going to be completely submerged so in some places in the nile delta already they're losing land at a rate of 100 yards a year and there's predicted to be a 30 centimeter rise in sea level by 2025 and this will flood 200 square kilometers of land in total by 2025. So as I mentioned before, the northern delta and the ancient city of Alexandria will be completely submerged by the sea level rise. And other side effects of the sea level rise will be that the Nile Delta will become a salty wasteland because obviously sea water is salty and they rely on fresh water from the River Nile in this region. And the sea water is going to have so many negative effects because this is an effect here that the land becomes salty itself and develops a thick salt crust as we can see here and no plant life can grow here unless they're specifically adapted to salty conditions which most crops are not. So this is forcing a lot of farmers off their own land and some farmers are doing something about this and they're trying to import sand in order to build flood defences and turn back the tide in the area. So overall, global warming will impact the Delta's agricultural resources, its tourism, human migration as well because of the region's fragile ecosystems. So as the water encroaches, more people will be migrating out of the area and it will cause huge changes for the country. And it could also trigger massive food shortages in the country as a whole because this is where most of its agricultural produce comes from, the Delta itself. And this is where two thirds of the population lives. So now we're going to look at some of the human causes and impacts of this climate change which is causing sea level on this coastline. So some of the human causes include the rise of fisheries, increased salt production in the region, heightened agricultural production as well because they're using up more fresh water which is causing salt water incursions and also natural increases in human population are putting pressure on the land as well and also it's being influenced by the building of dams upstream such as the High Aswan Dam which is reducing the amount of sediment reaching the delta. And some of the impacts of this will be the loss of livelihoods, especially because farmland will be lost to encroaching sea levels and salinity levels as well. There will be a loss of homes. At the moment, it's home to two thirds of Egypt's population. So that's a significant amount of people. Also potential food shortages and starvation as well, because the area is responsible for 60% of Egypt's food supply. And also significantly will be the loss of history and culture because Alexandria is one of these coastal towns. As we can see here, this is an ancient depiction of Alexandria and it was very significant in the Roman and Greek times. And it has a lot of history and culture attached to this town. And unfortunately, if we can't find a way of turning back the tides and reducing the sea level change, this whole historic town of Alexandria will be submerged. So finally, we're going to look at some mitigation strategies, which people have suggested in terms of reducing the impact on the Nile Delta from coastal erosion and rising sea levels. So the first is changing land uses. So decreasing in current cultivating the area, changing the land use essentially so that agriculture is not at risk from the rising sea levels. Also, another suggestion is switching cropping activates to aquaculture, which we can see in this photograph here. This is in a special greenhouse lab, but it's where plants are now being grown in water itself. So this is seen as a potential strategy. Also reusing drainage water for agriculture so as to minimise the amount of water that's being wasted in the area and reusing it. And this will support agriculture as well in the region. Also strengthening the existing coastal engineering structures. So not necessarily building new ones, but making the ones sure the ones that do exist are stronger and they're less likely to fail. And this is especially important on low-lying, high-risk areas such as in Alexandria. 
Also developing early warning systems in the case of flood events. Similar to what I mentioned before, changing the cropping patterns in the Nile Delta as climate change adaption measure, as a measure of climate change adaption, essentially. So introducing crops that will better survive in that region and also crops that have a higher tolerance to salinity so they can survive in soils which have a higher salt content, which is likely to happen in the Nile Delta as the seawater encroaches inland and especially putting these sorts of crops closer to the coastline. Also developing integrated coastal zone management plans, which are really holistic plans about protecting the coastal environment and also developing coastal protection policies as well. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.